Hello my friends, we are at IMTS 2024 and I'm at Muratech booth here with my friend Ken and they have so so many amazing technology in here and I would love you Ken to walk us through it and show us everything you have and for I us. And I would love that too. So obviously being an automation company, what we're showing here at our booth at IMTS is automated turning machines. Mm -hmm. We're showing twin spindle, single spindle versions, basic gantry, high speed gantry, robot load, robot unload, and everything in between. It has just been an ex it's just exciting so far. And every hour goes by, more and more people's coming to the booth, which makes it very fun. I remember a couple months ago when you were getting all this ready at your headquarters yes. in Charlotte. And it was so amazing to see them work, but it's even more to see them working in here. Like, and as you say, like with all the people around, seeing oh, what they're doing. And, and, and it's really active as you can see in here. So our MWR that we're showing here, we had this in setup when you were in Charlotte. So this is our twin spindle multitasking machine with auto loading. So what's really unique about this machine is the fact that the turret sits sideways and allows us to have the Y axis and a front load spindle. Mm -hmm. And because of that, now uh, we could, the, the Y axis milling capability and all is greatly increased comparatively to one that's just a live tool only. So this is a new development that Murata showed a couple years ago and now we're expanding. As you can see, we're using some info from our friend from Karen Engineering there as well as Renishaw as well, doing some auto inspection yeah. right here live at IMTS. I was about to mention that, that I'm seeing that you have an equator in there as well yes. for, to measure all the pieces. Yes, you've seen that when you were in the setup in Charlotte. So basically this allows us auto feedback as we're making parts, the operator's not having to intervene to see if the part is good or bad. And then it's the tools where that's just auto offset back into the machine. So very hands off, yep. very productive. It's kind of what we're known for making a lot of parts. And this is just a way to keep the machines running. It's like you said before, or automation is in your DNA, Automation right? is in our DNA, that is what we do. Also, this is one of the new ones, right? It is. The so, NSR. So this is the premiere in North America of actually physically seeing this machine. So this is kind of a uh, version of this machine, but only one spindle. Okay. So as Murata continues to grow and expand, we're putting a lot of focus and emphasis on smaller companies. Not everybody needs to make the volume that auto customers do. Yeah. So this machine is kind of dedicated and focused on a company that may is going to set up once or twice a week, uh, but still has the need for the milling capability and the high speed that we offer here. Okay. So in this case, we're showing a um, single spindle, 6,000 RPM uh, uh, spindle with a 8,000 RPM live tool. But we also have the turnover device in the machine, which is kind of unique to Murata. So this allows a customer to unload, turn the part around and load back okay. in without having to touch the part. I love that because that's very secure for the operator as well. Yes, and as, as we all know, as we're getting harder and harder to find operators, yeah. this allows a, a lot of self-containment. The operator may can walk away and come back once or twice an hour as we still continue to make parts. Okay, that, that's amazing that everything we do is automated. And oh yes. With this short labor we have, it's so good to know that with this machine, we can have them like yeah, operated. And, 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 and as we continue to grow and expand as a company, you're going to see more and more product offerings from us, not as we grow just the automotive, but also for the mid-level and smaller shops. Here we're showing an MD60, which is just a single spindle, very basic machine that we typically join in with some of our other machines. You recall, you said the Lego, the Lego. machine. <laughs> the, the Lego machine. So here we're just showing it as a single spindle version making a couple different parts going to the demo. We're showing our opposing spindle machine here. Um, this is a very popular machine for us. The price point is, is very moderate. So a lot of customers will start their automation venture here and, and then grow up into others. Once they fall in love with this oh, yes. one. Or sell, once... them, sell them, you sell one. <laughs> or once so. you want to start playing Legos, you start like, yes. okay, let's connect more machines. Yeah, that's correct. So right now you have these two working together. That's correct. So this machine is just creating a uh, hammer uh, is creating two different parts from the hammer using a bar feed. As this comes out, the hammer ends are being made on the MD60, okay. and the robot is packaging them both into a package, and then it's a giveaway for our customer. We will do a story about that for no, all no our No worries, we, we, we have given hundreds, hundreds of these away already. Can I get one as well? I think we can find you one, no problem. But as we continue to uh, come up with ideas, you know, we, even here we're showing a brake rotor that's being made uh, for the auto industry. 
I, because a lot of customers that come in is going to immediately identify that type of part, even if they're not in the auto industry. So it's just a good way for us to show the end users our capability and full expansion. And talking about your cap capability and all the expansion, you have different divisions at Moretta, right? That's correct. We do um, not just machine tool, meaning turning. We have a fabrication group, as you've seen in Charlotte. We have a textile yeah. division, clean factory automation. Uh, but anything metal cutting or metal fabrication, that's one of the divisions we work with. And so anytime we're to show, yeah. we really try hard to also show that oh. as well. What do you, do you think if we go with Arthur and Paul, and so they can talk a little bit about their fabrication? I think it's division. a great idea, and I think they're going to have fun doing it. Arthur, it's your turn, buddy. It's my turn. I get the camera. Yes. Perfect. So, Paul, we were just talking and learning about this machine. We're at your booth at IMTS, obviously. Yes. But the motorum, I mean, I heard it pinging when I was walking up to the sure, booth. Sure, it you makes a lot hear, of noise. You can hear the noise going on. Maybe not on these microphones, but you can hear it going on. So, what? what's the best use case for this machine? Like, who is using this machine? Where does this fit? Sure. Yeah, the majority of these kind of machines are going to end up in contract manufacturers, job shops, uh, you know, precision sheet metal fabricators, yeah. and OEMs as well. Okay. So Light kinda, gauge material like, yep. primarily, um, quarter inch maximum. About a quarter inch maximum. Right, so right. What about material types? Do you, is it mostly steel or could you do stainless? Aluminum, stainless steel, yep. mild steel, okay. copper brass. As Norm, long as someone yeah. can pick it up, punch it, we're yep. in good shape. Yep. Oh, that's perfect. So we're talking about the punching. What's some of the features that make with the, with the punching machine that make this machine stand out versus say going through like a stamp press or something like that? Uh, main advantage of the turret press is it's flexible, okay. right? So stamping is one tool for one part. Yeah. Can't make a different part with that tool. Yeah. There's a turret press up to 46 tools per se, or oh, wow. 54 tools, something like that in a yeah. turret press. Um, allows flexibility for primarily lower volume and medium volume runs. So again, that, that contract manufacturer, that job shop that's out there, right. it's a really good fit for what they're looking for. Yeah, if their volumes creep up, yeah. then maybe you think about a hard tooling stamping solution. Well, it's, right. But it's nice to have that versatility so they can take all of those jobs in yep. without investing. I used to do like tool and die mold work for punch presses. Right. They take a lot of time, a lot of, time. A lot of money. Expen and if you mess one of them up, it's ridiculously expensive. Right. right. Ridiculously expensive. Right. A tool and a turret punch press is a lot less expensive than yeah. a yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So um, so what about the control? Is it the same as like a CNC control? I'm more from the machining side my side, or what does that look like over here? Well, yeah, the FANUC, we use FANUC controls, yep. FANUC motors, FANUC drives, and everything. Yeah. Um, we have an embedded PC in the FANUC control, so that gives us our, yep. Windows, inter our Windows interface. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now our control is over there. That's the real control. Oh, so this one, what's this, this one for? This. this is for the this is for the FS load and load only. So it's got two separate controls. Two separate controls. Okay. Yep. So we were talking earlier and you mentioned there's some versatility. What size sheets can we throw in this bad boy? The one we're looking at right here is, uh, is a four foot by eight foot max envelope. Okay. Okay. But we build systems for the four four foot by ten foot and a five foot by ten foot envelope. Okay. Right. Right. What you're seeing now is the uh, FS load on load uh, doing, going through a sheet detection, make sure it's only whole, uh, got one sheet yep. in the suction cups. Oh, that's smart. And then what you're seeing right there is the load on load table or low unload grippers that are come in and physically handle the finished sheet while we're staging the next sheet to be processed. Well, that is such a smart thing because I mean, so much time is wasted on changeover where you know, you're know you waiting for the machine to start working again. Yep. You're, you just pulled out the finished one. Now you're loading in the raw one. Yep. I mean, your punch to punch time must be 17, 18 seconds, that's very fast. That's very ridiculously fast. low. Yep. Yep. That's fantastic. Yeah. Another nice feature as far as flexibility of the FS is yeah. you saw we only have a small stack of material here. But well, we could put a one stack of four foot by eight foot. Yep. Or we could put two smaller stacks. Oh, okay. So you stack, stack of part A, 
stack a part B. Yeah, so you could we, run two separate part two numbers. Two separate part numbers. We can even go up to four stacks with huh. a load unload. With could you do four separate part numbers for those? Absolutely. That's Absolutely. crazy. Absolutely. So for that for that very high flexible. Mix, yeah. High, yep. Yep. High mix, low volume. It's yeah. perfect. Uh, part kitting, assembling. That's very, very cool. Good, so very what good. control do we have over here on the punch side? This is be the FANUC control. Okay, this is the FANUC this side of it. This is the FANUC control. That's fantastic. So I love that we've got a nice big safety button here, the different corners of the machine. Safety first. Safety first. So we've got that set up. And then we've got a FANUC control and over here. And this is the FANUC control. Okay. You know, the thing that pops out is the Windows user interface, yep. right? So the HMI, uh, human machine interface, is yep. a Mar Marada interface. We have an embedded PC in the FANUC control, so it's a true industrial control. Yep. But we have the embedded PC uh, in the FANUC, so now you have a nice Windows interface. Fully networkable, it can be on your uh, network, pull programs off your server if you like. So you've got all the connectivity you would need. All the again. connectivity, Ethernet, yeah, Ethernet ready yeah. for to be on your server. Um, remote diagnostics in case really? we needed to dial in to see what's going on with the machine. We, our service department can yeah. access the machine remotely from well, the U.S. or Japan even. Yeah, well, and that's a great solution. I mean, to be able to remote connect to, to diagnosis, everyone's pushing for more and more automation, yeah, all the different stacks and materials. The fact that you can do different part IDs based on each stack, yes. that's a beautiful thing to help support manufacturers out there that want to be more versatile, want to be more flexible, and they don't want to pay an arm and a leg to get it. Right, right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Pong. Jason, I know we're here at your booth and we're gonna go over everything that you have on the automation side. I have to be honest, before I came up to your booth today, I was completely ignorant. I knew you provided the machine tools and I thought that's all you did. Okay. And then I learned the machine tools are just the tip of the iceberg. So what are we looking at on this table here? I got you, great question. It's really a representation of the different automation technologies that Murata manufactures. Okay. Starting from automated storage and retrieval systems, down to automated guided vehicles. That, that is absolutely a massive tower. Do you actually make them that tall in factories? We do. We, really? we do. We can go up to uh, 30 meters. A 30 meter high storage system. Yeah, it really, <laughs> the advantage of the automated storage and retrieval system is really to take it the next step above what a human can do. Yeah. Right, so really we see most things above 35 feet. Yeah, okay. Uh, which is what we're representing over, over, over here from a scale. Yeah. You can see a smaller system all the way up to a smaller system so really now, designed at scale. Now, is that the smallest system you would engineer then or do you do them smaller? You can get them a little, we'll say shorter. Yeah, But okay. this is our uh, shell system for like totes or boxes. Okay, so it doesn't just have to be skids. Right, we've got the pallet systems over here which yeah. are usually substantially taller. Yep. Uh, more weight, larger items. Way more bearing. Exactly. Yeah. And, and usually pallets are taller overall, so you're going to want to take advantage of, of height. Right. Which with totes and cases, smaller load, don't necessarily take advantage of height, usually in, in a facility that already exists. That is so cool. And then we got the next one down. That looks like that's still pallets. It, and then these look more like totes and bins and stuff. It, exactly. Okay. We have three different technologies really designed for totes or bins. Uh, yeah. And all three of them are really the right technology would match the right load, right throughput, right speed. Uh, they each have a little wow. bit of a different uniqueness to, to them. Yeah, okay, well there's something over here on the corner. And I mean, I've seen this on ski slopes, but I don't think I've ever seen this in a machine shop. This gotcha. looks like the gondola that takes me up the hill. Very similar, it's a overhead monorail. Okay. Uh, and the whole idea is uh, the uh, at, a, at, a, at a production facility, yeah. maybe you have uh, ceilings or work centers or uh, rooms yeah. where you build things that have to be isolated from all the other areas. Okay. Where you're able to bring the material from a warehouse and, yeah. uh, and, and uh, through a facility where maybe you don't want, you don't have any floor space. Yeah. You can support it from the ceiling where you can just drop it down right to a work center. Well, that's fantastic. So you can kind of work with the conveyance and materials for however your customer needs it, then exactly. whatever their facility has. Because then you've also got, looks like standard, more of a standard conveyor system over here. Standard do you guys, picking. Do you guys make the conveyor systems as well, or? Murata would partner with okay. uh, with companies that are uh, more suited to handle 
the conveyance part of it where okay. we, we would design it and deliver it as part of a full solution, but we're, yeah. not, we're, not, the only, we're not the true manufacturer of that technology. Well, that makes sense, just like forklifts, right? Like, right. It wouldn't make sense to make those. There are experts out there. Exactly. And it's very smart to partner with people. That's why people choose to partner with Mur Muratech because right. they know if they can get their CNC's, they can get their automated storage solutions, right. at, which I didn't know, but now everybody out there <laughs> knows. It's just so crazy. You know, our, other, our, other, our other main technology is automated guided vehicles. Oh, so we okay. do automated forklifts. Oh, uh, which, wow. are which are represented here. So you can take the human off the forklift huh. and deliver pallets around the facility where you need to go. So you mean if my forklift driver had a bad night's sleep, it's not gonna give me an accident? It's not. <laughs> it's gonna work every day, it's gonna show up, and it doesn't take any holidays. Oh, no sick time either. And no sick time. Oh man, I don't have to train it either, do I? No, you do not. <laughs> There's a lot of benefits to an automated forklift there system is, that there I have is. never considered before this conversation, sir. There is. Thank you so much, Jason, for yeah. giving me a little bit of an overview no of this. Thank you to everyone out there that's tuning in to watch us. We are doing deep dives on other machine tools at this cell. And I just make sure you follow along and check out the rest of the footage and support Muratech. Reach out to them. If you saw something today in this video that's going to make a difference, we got the right team for you.